It's challenge time. In this video, I'm going to go through an exercise that I use with students um, to get them back into the kind of photographic process, uh, get those juices flowing. It's called Hunter Galleries. <laughs> Very loosely based around um, kind of our ancestral past. If you think about our ancestors, when they wanted to go out for food, you would either have hunters that would have a specific task, you need to go out with a bow and arrow, shoot a deer, bring it back to the tribe, um, or you would be gathering, or a combination of both, where you'd be going along with a, um, a, a bag or a basket, picking berries, nuts, that sort of thing, uh, finding things along the way. So we're going to apply that to our photography. And the first part, um, is going to be hunting. So we're going to hunt for a particular photograph. We're going to uh, do all the planning ahead of time, conceptualize it, uh, work out exactly what that frame is going to look like, do all the planning, and then we're going to go out and when it comes to it, we have one singular shot. That's very hard um, to even get your head around in the modern digital world where you can snap away uh, all the time, but you only have one frame. Um, so it has to be absolutely spot on. So that's going to be the hunting bit. We'll then move to um, the gathering phase, and that's almost the complete opposite of that. We're going to go to a, a particular location. We will sort of plan where we want to go for that. But other than that, we have no expectation of the type of photographs that we're going to be taking, what we might see there. Um, and we'll have a bit of a wander around um, and uh, guide us through that process of getting in um, to a different kind of mode of photography of just being open to what uh, might be there and what catches our eye. Sometimes when we've been taking photographs for a while, we kind of get a bit of camera paralysis that we're really conscious that we're not getting the, the best photograph in the world and the conditions might not be quite right. And we end up just, our, our cameras can gather dust. We just don't get out enough. So this exercise is really good um, for getting some of that, that, uh, that mojo back and getting back into the field with our cameras. Um, and actually falling uh, back in love a little bit with a camera of, of actually uh, re-engaging that feeling that you get when you first get your camera or a new camera and really just want to photograph everything. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, think of a scene that we'd really like to photograph that we're going to hunt for. Um, and that might be something that you've uh, walked past, uh, might be something that you've seen on a regular basis but you just didn't have your camera with you or it might be a scene that you've seen uh, online, be it on social media or on the web. Um, so I've got my computer up um, and it's this scene here down at Portreath that uh, I've had in my head, I've seen on social media quite uh, frequently recently. So I, I really like um, some of these uh, images. It's a lovely bit of framing going on there. Alternative view. But I think I really like the, the composition, yeah, I like that. Uh, where you have the leading line of the um, the harbour wall going out, waves breaking behind. It's been taken a thousand times, but it really um, appeals to me. So I'm going to have a little look at um, how I could potentially get that image. Um, so when, um, when, you, when you're looking at these things, I mean, obviously I already know um, where this is, but you'll quite often um, find some location data um, or potentially down in the in the hashtags like I've got Paul Treath here. So we know it's down at Paul Treath. So that gives us a starting point. Um, you might want to look at uh, OS maps um, or Google Maps is quite a good place to start or um, uh, others if uh, if you so wish. Let's have a little look at Paul Treath. And have a little zoom in. There we go. Um, so we know that the beach is down here. We've got the car park um, and we've got the main harbour here. Quite hard to work out where our scene is, but if we flip it into satellite, we can see the harbour wall going out um, and we can even see the little hut on the end there. Um, so if I flip back to the, the image, um, we can see it's sort of square onto the hut and we've got the wall facing out. So that must be... Um, from back here somewhere in order to kind of get that straight line down to the hut with the curve almost exacerbates the curve 
and we can see down here we've got a bit of flat ground and there's that little hut up there above the harbour wall. So in terms of um, planning, in order to line my shot up, I'm probably going to want my camera about there so that I can shoot out towards the hut with this nice curve of the harbour wall, um, hopefully with some waves breaking behind, um, depending on what the weather's doing. In order to find out what the uh, waves are doing, um, I'm going to need some tide information. So um, you might have a, a an app on your on your phone to do this, but let's just have a little look at this. So on Thursday, in order for waves to be breaking behind the hut there, um, we're going to need pretty much high tide. We're on the push. So um, high tide is at uh, 2.33 this afternoon. Um, we'd probably get waves um, breaking over the top in the hour leading up to that. Um, so we probably want to be there at about 1.30, um, something like that, uh, set up. Um, so that we can wait for our moment, remembering that we've only got one shot uh, that we can possibly do. So let's see what the weather is going to be doing at that point. All sorts of different uh, weather apps you can use. I really like XC Weather. I've got the app on my phone um, as well because that's just a bit more convenient, but just showing you on this one. So we've got a look at Portreath. And today we can see at one, um, as if by magic, uh, sun hopefully will come out by then. I never entirely trust it, but hopefully it will. 12% cloud, so there should be a little bit of interest in the sky, but hopefully not completely clouded over. It's chilly, seven degrees, so I'm definitely gonna be um, taking lots of warm layers with me if I'm gonna be waiting around. And the wind speed is reasonably calm, nine to 12 miles per hour. Um, so we know it's uh, reasonably safe to be out there. We're not gonna get blown off our little space and tripod stabilization, stabilization should be fairly simple. It is from the north though, so that's why it's really, really cold. Um, and that should be pushing the waves into um, that, that jetty. I don't think the waves will be massive um, because of the, uh, the wind speed, but let's just have a little look on uh, Magic Seaweed, which um, is designed for surfers, but is really useful uh, for us as well. Uh, where's the search bar gone? There it is. Da -da -da -da. Let's try spelling it right. The, uh, the the wind speeds, it will agree, sort of one mile an hour, very light at the moment. Um, but the, uh, the surf is four to six feet. So it's not massive, um, but that might have um, a, a bit of interest that might be okay. A more advanced um, option for planning is using something like the Photo Pills app, um, which has a bit of everything. It can be a bit daunting when you first get on it, but this is an amazing tool for um, uh, doing your planning and working out where everything is. So um, if I just zoom out from this. And uh, let's work our way up the coast. Well, I was working before. Or Treath. Let's zoom in. And we can see um, that we've got our little promontory where we want to put the camera. We'll tap that in there. And just check that we're on the right day. Do you do now? Yep, good. Um, so if we uh, if we scroll forth to just gone one, we can see that the um, the sun will actually kind of be behind us. So it should be illuminating the uh, um, the hut really nicely. If we wanted to get a a golden hour shot, um, we'd need to be there at about four o'clock in the afternoon. That shows it quite nicely. The sun will be setting over in that direction, so it wouldn't be behind. And you could do this for um, for any date in the future. So we could be planning you know, six months ahead, potentially. Wouldn't know what the weather was doing, but you would know where the sun was going to be. So it gives you golden hour information, blue hour information. Um, when you go into night, it will even uh, give you um, uh, celestial information, where the Milky Way might be 
Uh, they do that in augmented reality now as well. So you can line up your shot during the day as to where the Milky Way might be um, and then uh, and then come back at the right time and get it. So really, really useful. Got loads of other features as well. So it'll give you information about um, um, sunrise, sunset, golden hours, all that kind of stuff. Um, exposure settings, where the moon's going to be, all sorts, absolutely all sorts. It will even give you an overlay of meteor showers and all sorts when you get into it. But for, for our purposes, it's just quite handy to know where the sun is going to be, when we're going to be there, um, which is that yellow line extending out behind us, um, which uh, should put a nice bit of light onto the hut. So here we are in location. <clears throat> Pretty much as we expected, really. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of cloud cover, so the sun's gone behind that. So I was walking down, there was a lovely bit of light on the hut, um, which has disappeared, sadly. Um, but I've got a bit of time, so I'm just going to sort of sit here and hope that that cloud shifts over. It does look like quite a large cloud bank. Um, we have got some waves breaking over the back. They're not the super impressive ones um, that you see on a big storm day, but it is what it is, um, and we are getting some. And certainly the composition is working out um, just uh, just as we wanted it really from this location. We've got that lovely little S bend in the harbour wall there going out towards the hut. And I've composed it on a rule of thirds so that the hut is on one of those intersections. Um, the other thing that I kind of knew ahead of time is that I wanted to compress the image quite a bit. So I've come out with a 24 to 70 lens, um, which is in most of the way. I would imagine. Yeah, it's right on 70 at the moment. So it's in right the way um, so I can compress the image. So now it's just a waiting game. I'm waiting for light and ideally light that coincides with the big waves coming behind it. It's very frustrating. Like I'm having to hang on to my hands. To, like That would have been all right. Um, to take just one shot but knowing that i've got just one shot i really want to wait for that perfect moment So we've now moved on to the gathering part of our challenge and it's almost completely the opposite of the um, hunter approach. We've come out to a beautiful bit of woodland but with zero expectation about what photographs we might get. I'm going to have a little wander around the woods, uh, camera in hand and I'm just going to take in the scene, anything that catches my eye. I'm going to first visually explore it, have a little look around, check out the different angles, try and consider what it was that first caught my eye um, what it is that's appealing about it. Is it the texture or the composition or how the light hits it? Um, and then finally experiment by taking some photographs. We're not limited anymore. You can take as many photographs as you like. This is all about re-engaging with that kind of inner child, uh, that feeling of when you get a brand new camera uh, or your first camera and you just want to snap photographs absolutely everywhere um, and take all sorts of things. But um, that's how we're going to start. And then as we move on, we'll become a little bit more mindful about what it is that we're actually looking for. find this um, branch very enticing. The light going along here is nice and dappled. Got a few fronds and the branch itself makes a lovely leading line. I'm just going to see if I can compose that. And because the uh, moss is very, very bright, I'm going to take my UV values down so I can get all those darks in there as well. Could be without dog in the background, not going to lie. Wait for Obes is bottom to get out of the way. Yeah, we've got some fair. Oh, maybe we'll just leave him in. Obes! That's it. 
Yeah, just by coming up a little bit, I can get a little bit of sun flare and a bit more angle on it. So we can get those little frondy bits that appeal to me. Different composition, diagonal line across the frame. Lovely. Got ya. Right. Camera under the other. So hopefully you've enjoyed your um, gathering mission, uh, walking around, uh, I've been walking around the woods, you could be walking around anywhere you like really. Um, the trick to this really is to get back into that mindset or when you first got your camera and you just wanted to snap absolutely everything. Um, that's the first part. Then to take a little bit more time, get a bit more mindful of what it is that's appealing to you um, and really searching out for those different color contrasts, textures, how the light falls on things um, in order to find what it is you find compelling about that scene and photographing it. Quite often when we find something that we see appealing, um, we can't get that photograph, we can't get that composition quite right to start with. And, and oftentimes just visually exploring that, uh, that scene that you're looking at, very often getting in closer into what exactly it is that appeal to you uh, can really help with that. Allow your intuition to be your guide with these images. Don't get too het up with the exact quality of them. These don't have to be National Geographic front cover or get a gazillion likes on social media. It's about staying in that moment with your camera, falling back in love with photography if you've uh, lost a little bit of that, um, and just doing what's enjoyable to you. And, and, and that ultimately is what it's all about really, isn't it? And that brings this exercise together. We've gone out and hunted for an image very specific requirements of exactly what we wanted to get, researched it um, and uh, went and got our shot. And we've uh, explored the other side as well of gathering, of seeing what we can um, get along the way. The reality is in, in real life, we can combine these two things, can't we? We can um, go out with some expectation of what we want to get, um, but not be too bummed out if we don't get that exact thing and just be open to the experiences that might present themselves. That is what makes us really good photographers. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I hope you've got some images that you're really proud of and that you've enjoyed taking. Um, please do share them. I'd love to see what you've come up with and look forward to seeing you in the next video.